I'm going to talk uh, about tech tools, but really what I'm talking about and what I want to emphasize is um, how to create a new virtual work culture, because that's really what we're talking about. The tools just enable us to do that. Uh, and in some respects, they should be invisible and behind the scenes. What we're really talking about is creating a new virtual work culture, and it's something that some of us had to do literally um, overnight. Um, let me give you my three takeaways up front in case we run short on time. Uh, and some of these are obvious that apply in other contexts and some of the less, not so much. But the first one is um, always be striving for more effective communication. Um, and as leaders, remember to always project calm and confidence. I think that's absolutely critical now um, more than ever, whether we're using our tech tools or, or otherwise. The second big takeaway that I have is um, don't just make do. You know, I, I, I hear a lot and I'm reading a lot about folks that are trying to make the best of this situation. Um, I think we should make the most of it. What's really an extraordinary circumstance and opportunity for us. Um, I had a, an incredibly productive day yesterday. And at the same time, I had coffee with my wife. I had dinner with my family and I was able to play baseball with one of my boys. Um, and that's what life's all about. And to be able to do that in a way where you can structure and sort of reimagine your work environment and your home environment, I think it's just uh, just an extraordinary opportunity. So don't just make do, but make the most of it. And then the third thing is really deals with the tech tools. And I think this is something you need to be really mindful of. Um, it's, I think you need to establish, or at least I feel like we did, we needed to establish new rules of the road uh, and put them in writing to, and, my philosophy on this is you you shape your culture and then you let it evolve rather than um, letting your culture evolve and then trying to shape it on the back end. That's a much more difficult um, undertaking. So um, I'll talk about how we did that and how we shaped our culture. So um, just a quick background from, from my office's perspective, and I know we have, a Doug was saying, we have a number of folks uh, from different size offices on the, the call or webinar. Um, we're about um, 25 people and we're based all in Washington, D.C. So I can lay eyes on everybody. Everybody knows each other pretty well. I know that's not your environment <coughs> and you may not be the IG and likely are not, but some of the principles I'm talking about, I think can be scaled up or down and can be applied to, to teams of all sizes. So a uh, little background. So beginning in uh, early February, we were noticing um, in the news uh, this little thing with uh, call, uh, called Corona-19 that was happening in uh, Wuhan, China, and was, uh, first of all, uh, we saw in the news, you know, requiring a, a team of World Health Organization professionals to fly over to figure out what's going on. <laughs> At the same time, we have a city of 11 million people on lockdown. So that kind of got our attention a little bit on uh, what uh, could happen in the the exposure here. And I'll be what we do in our office. We we had uh, in the physical world, we do a standing um, 15 minute um, stand up meeting uh, every Monday afternoon just to just to kind of catch up on what's going on. It's meant to be a very short just take the pulse of the office kind of thing. And in the beginning in Jan in uh, in early early February, Quite frankly, my comments were um, somewhat in jest and they were almost paternalistic reminders of, hey, make sure you wash your hands. You know, there's this there's this virus out here, you know, roll, roll your eyes because mom said to make sure you wash your hands, make sure you wash your hands. That's kind of how I treated it originally. And, uh, you know, I regret that at the time, but that, that was it originally. But there was a definitive point in March, you know, March 7th, that weekend, and uh, if you go back in time and you, you think about what was going on, we had that was when the news broke that there was an infection at the CPAC conference in, in, in uh, D.C. There was the first infection of a of a of a uh, pastor in D.C. that caused a church to go on lockdown. And then Italy, a lot of the news that weekend was uh, Italy, one province in Italy in the northern region was looking to lock down. So that's when it really flipped the switch and, and took things seriously. So that weekend we developed a, a COVID preparedness and response plan. And um, I came in Monday morning and said, hey, we're gonna have an all hands staff meeting uh, and I'm gonna do a PowerPoint slide. So people, 
I think my I think my team realized that something was a little different, um, both in my tone and the seriousness in which I was taking this, and the fact that I had a PowerPoint slide. And we actually had a sit down meeting versus a stand up, and I went over the public health risks that we knew um, at that time. And I went over the steps that uh, we were doing as leadership in the office to prepare our office for uh, the spread of COVID-19 uh, and how we were going to be prepared if it should uh, escalate. And I did that presentation and that's really my first. Uh, and some of the things that we did was make sure that we were, it was like, hey, effective, like immediately, as soon as we're done this meeting, I need you to, we need to test our, the current VPN connections from your systems to make sure that you're able to connect outside of the plug-in network. Um, make sure your inventory your equipment and you have what you need. Make sure managers are talking to, um, to their subordinates on what their, what their plan is. Um, and, and I told them, hey, uh, and look at the work plans to make sure we've got sufficient portable work. Um, that takes me to my first lesson and my first takeaway, which is uh, always strive for more effective communication because um, I thought it was a brilliant idea at the time, but I ended my PowerPoint slide, um, which I'm apt to do with the voice of optimism, was um, I had a slide that said, um, be positive, we got this, with an exclamation point. And my, I told you my staff was a little antsy because they knew that I was a little apprehensive about what's going on. And as soon as the words came out of my mouth, be positive, we got this exclamation point, it dawned on me that that could be interpreted as we got this, as in we got this under control, be positive, or be positive, we got this exclamation point, things are very bad and we are infected now. So it was one of those double meaning messages of like, oh, and that's not what I intended. I intended it to literally be positive and uh, we got this thing under control. And it was a a good reminder for me of like, you know, make sure that we're absolutely clear on um, more effective communication. So the um, we instantly after that Monday, our office, we tested and then I called um, the next day or the following. I said, hey, uh, we're working from home effective immediately. Make sure you can connect. And then um, our initial plan was to use Skype. And uh, that lasted all of about, for us, Skype for Business lasted all of about 24 hours because I, I realized that we needed um, video conferencing capabilities. So uh, we, instant, we had teams loaded on our machines, but we never used it and nobody in P Pension Benefit Corporation uh, used it. And so we said, hey, we, we've already paid for it. We have it. Why aren't we using Teams for video conferencing? So literally the next day we scheduled our first video teams uh, meeting and um, and we we uh, uh, and we've we do that every day since we've got a standing meeting in the morning. Uh, the second takeaway um, that uh, I mentioned earlier is you know don't just make do but make the most of it. We've been trying as an office we we really try to be on the cutting edge of a, of a very flexible agile workforce and. To me, this was just like a golden opportunity to use the tools that we have to change and sh reshape our culture and to do something a little bit different and, and particularly in the area of data analytics. And so um, we just embrace that and we, we uh, haven't turned back on that uh, idea. The um, third takeaway, which I think is critical with uh, these tools is establishing rules of the road. And the rules of the road for, I, I, I think of it as the three R's of a, a new rhythm, routine, and rituals. And I think you need to, uh, we needed to establish that for our office rather than just let it evolve. It's, hey, this is a very r different rhythm for our office. So what are we gonna do with our 25 person office? So for us, our rhythm was a, um, a daily, we start our day, I start my day with, a, with an 8.30 call with senior leaders, but um, as an office, we've got a nine o'clock 15 minute catch up video call with everybody. Just, and it's really to make sure, uh, check on how everybody's doing and kind of give them announcements for the day and what uh, what's going on. I also used an email at the end of every day to reiterate any public health announcements that have gone out in the Washington DC, Virginia, Maryland, DC, uh, Virginia area. So uh, there's a lot of news out there and we don't want people obsessing on the news. But we want to we consolidate that and, and share that with folks. 
Um, so we wanted that to be kind of the rhythm of the day. We also changed our, our office hours, virtual office hours and core work hours. So one of the things we realized, we a lot of us were, um, a lot of us were scrambling around and I'm sure you're in the same boat trying to provide for our families. And when, it's very disheartening when you go out and you go to the grocery store and you see the long empty shelves for, uh, for necessities. And so people have to take time out during their day to, to, to provide for their families and, to, and if you have school age kids to teach your kids. So we wanted a blackout period. So we blacked out the, the 11 o'clock to one o'clock period. We can't guarantee there's not going to be business during that time, but it's really a blackout period that people can focus on their work. And if they need to on the individual level to take time to spend with their children or to go shopping or whatever, we want them to know to the extent that we can control that, we're not going to schedule much activities uh, or meetings in that in that time frame. Um, in terms of rituals, I know I think some of the IGs are doing the same things that we're doing. You know, you try to do uh, uh, step challenges and you try to recognize birthdays and you try to uh, have um, coffee chats that are not business related and that sort of thing. We do a, we do a wellness Wednesday, uh, early morning Wednesday and we have somebody that's into uh, yoga, so they do sort of a chair yoga routine for us. Uh, we had somebody that did a block on on meditation. So it basically just stress reduced uh, uh, activities. Um, so that's kind of the, uh, the 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 third takeaway and the rules of the road that we've established.